This is a Kia Stinger, and you'd be forgiven for thinking that this is Kia's first proper sporty car, because Kia's first actual sporty car was a Lotus. I say Lotus, it is quite plainly a Kia, as you can see here by this badge on the nose that says Kia. Joking aside, it is very obviously an M100 Lotus Elan with a few tweaks, so how on earth did it end up with a Kia badge? It's no secret that the 1.8 litre front wheel drive M100 Lotus Elan wasn't exactly a huge hit during its original production run. It came out with a 1.6 litre Isuzu engine with up to 162 brake horsepower, which got it from 0 to 62 in 6.5 seconds and on to 137 miles an hour. It was developed using money from Lotus's then owners, General Motors, and was, curiously, for a car from a company that prides itself on making cars that handle beautifully, front wheel drive. The idea behind the Lotus was pretty sound. It was going to be a more mass market proposition and better suited to the American market. It was light enough out the gate and certainly perky enough, but it just wasn't a hit. The press gave it mixed reviews, though some did praise Lotus's use of front wheel drive. Later on, there was a Series 2 that addressed some handling concerns but did lower power, and that came out in 1994. Lotus had hoped to sell more than it did. Fewer than 5,000 left Hethel. But all was not lost. Rather than put everything in the bin and walk away sullen-faced, Lotus sold the rights to the Elan to Kia, giving it a new lease on life. I'm sure right now there are some die-hard Lotus people trying to tell the instant differences between the Kia and the Lotus. Well, here's what you should have spotted. The rear lights aren't the Renault Alpine GTA jobs that Lotus use. No, these are Kia's own. The right height is slightly higher. Under the hood is a Kia motor rather than the Isuzu from the Lotus. And, of course, there are a couple of tiny interior tweaks. Oh, and the badges. You know what? You can be forgiven for not being able to tell them apart instantly. It weighed a little more than Lotus's car at 1,070 kilos to Hethel's sub-ton. Its performance, despite having less power, was on par, almost, with the S2 version of Lotus's Elan. 0 to 62 miles an hour takes 7.4 seconds, and it'll manage 137 miles an hour. Kira Elan on paper seems interesting enough, and it's certainly different from its source material to warrant a look of its very own. What are we sitting on then? Oh my, this is a thing of the 90s. It feels like every pore of it is dripping 90s. I feel like I should be wearing a shell suit. Got all the gauges, all the switch gear is just, it's that chunky clunkiness. The speedo goes up to 140. Most cars these days would laugh at that, but it does have the most 90s of 90s things in the world. Pop-up headlamps. Because this is a very genteel car, there's no urgency to anything. The, the gearbox is quite slow, it's quite short throw, but it's, it's kind of got a sponginess to it, so when you hit your mark it just sort of squidges in. The clutch again is quite vague, it's soft and squidgy, and going into a bend I'm not sure if you could see, but the entire vehicle seemed to roll like a boat in a storm. Round we go again, you can feel the front just roll over. This isn't a sports car in the modern sense of a sports car, where everything has to be race-bred and has to have been engineered on the Nürburgring and set a time that's competitive and marginally faster than the next guy. This is a sports car in the sense of you can go out and feel sporting. With the roof down, you get a glorious view. It's wafty, it's entertaining. If you want to hustle it, you can, but this is more of a, a relaxed sports car. More like golf than, say, the 100-metre sprint. The steering is kind of vague, I don't think the front-wheel driveness helps that all that much. You can almost feel a little bit of Lotus in it when you punt it. In the steering you get like little hints of, ooh, there's a little bit of magic here. Because the front-wheel drive thing in the Lotus, some people genuinely adored it. To call this a sports car by today's standards? Nah, it isn't. It's more of a GT cruisy thing, the boot's kind of small, the engine's noisy, a bit rough, it goes well enough, obviously, it's 0 to 60, not 7 and change. But I don't feel any urgency about this, I don't want to go out and fly around the countryside, I don't want to hang the bum out. 
I just want to enjoy the act of driving it. It's a beautiful summer's day. I'm gently ambling around, having a lovely time on one of like the three days of British summer that we'll ever get. It's not the best car in the world, far from it in fact, but it's quite entertaining this. I'm having a pleasant day. And sometimes you can't say fairer than that. The strange thing, well, stranger thing about the Kirillan is that it's a rare beast. Around 1,000 were sold during its run from 1996 to 1999, and it was never officially sold in Europe. It's difficult not to be baffled by this car. I mean, in the 90s, Kia wasn't the powerhouse of electrification, reliability and family friendliness it is today. It made more um, interesting cars. Interesting, I think, is the, the polite synonym. So the fact that Kia would bring out an Elan and people would buy it is, is a bit mad. Thinking about it, if your brand isn't known for being exciting, bringing a fully developed, good-looking, quickish sports car to market may well be a good move to changing some perceptions. I mean, in this case it didn't, and the Kia Elan is something relegated to the that was a weird moment in automotive history bin, but hey, you miss every shot you don't take. After that first go at sportiness, you end up here at the Stinger. Now the Stinger comes with a 361 brake horsepower, 3.3 litre V6. 0 to 62 takes 4.7 seconds, and it'll top out just under 170 miles an hour. It looks good, it certainly goes well enough, it's comfortable, it's quiet, it cruises, but it can be exciting when you want to put it into sport mode. Okay, it might be a little expensive for some, but if you consider where Kia was just 20 years ago, it's a hell of an achievement. The Elan in Kia, guys, was not a great success. It didn't propel Kia to global sports car mega stardom, and very few people know what it is. But it's cool that it exists in the first place, and it means that even though it's a little out of character, stuff like the Stinger, it's not a huge surprise. Mm-hmm.